When I was 11, I was at a youth program when a family friend came up to me. I remember he smiled and asked, are you a math and science person or a history and English person? And I looked at him like a deer in headlights. I didn't know how to answer. Though the question was merely small talk, it stuck with me. Could I be both? Neither? In many ways, I am a science person. During high school, I did biology research. My first project was related to antibiotic resistance. So this research was already relevant to people's lives, but it often took some work to make that connection clear. And I did that at science fairs. There is nothing like the moment when a grin of understanding appeared on the face of a little five-year-old who had come to listen. I saw the same look in others who stalked by. There was an aha moment where it clicked. I realized that as much as I loved doing science, I also loved translating science. Looking back, this wasn't surprising. In middle school, I spent three years teaching myself modern Greek so I could understand this one Greek song. It's a long story. Around the same time, I taught myself how to code, and I designed websites in my free time, thinking about how to communicate people's personalities and businesses online in creative ways. I wanted to learn more about how to bridge science with the people that it impacts. I saw lots of examples of science communication, articles in the technology section of the New York Times, pamphlets at the doctor's office, and videos in Khan Academy. I discovered that there are people who make livings filming nature documentaries and turning research into policy. I thought it was so cool that people were doing this work. But how could I get there? And why wasn't I learning about these careers in school? In my high school experience, science communication was not accessible to me. So I decided to seek my own solution and start an organization called Science in Us. I don't want other students to face those same obstacles, not knowing what science communication is and not knowing how to get started with it. So I gathered a small team of high schoolers from surrounding schools. In the past year and a half, we've held three events at local universities for over 100 middle and high school students. We've had dozens of invited guests who illustrate science comics, preserve artifacts from outer space missions, and produce podcasts about technology and the future. We've shared our ideas with and learned from other science communicators at conferences across the country. And really, we're just getting started. In the process, I found other organizations doing similar work. ComSciCon, for example, has events across the country for and by graduate students who lead science communication programs. The Story Collider, another example, has over 50 events a year for people to share evocative stories of how science has impacted them. But the closest other science communication program that I found for high schoolers is run by a university in Hawaii. With my organization, Science and Us, my goal is to change that. And we started out by hosting events. At our first event, I remember meeting this eighth grader whose parents had made her come. She was a self-proclaimed theater and art kid, ready to have a really boring day at Science and Us. But she became intrigued when a presenter began talking about using Twitter, something that she was familiar with, to communicate her research. By the end of the day, this eighth grader excitedly applied to join our organizing team and is now our youngest member. A few months later, she voluntarily went to a talk about the, ha the science of happiness, which sparked a new interest in neuroscience for her. The other day, I asked her, is neuroscience something you would have been interested in before science in us? And she said, no way, Jose, science scared me. She still loves theater and art, but has realized that she doesn't have to choose a side. She can do both. Now, what I see as the successful part of this story isn't that science has gained another person, but rather that, for my friend, these fields are no longer closed off. Science and art are both equally important and valid parts of her identity, and she now feels comfortable embracing that. Now, Science in Us isn't trying to promote what many people call STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Instead, I want to take a step beyond that. 
instead of crossing the boundaries that divide fields, I want to eliminate those boundaries altogether. In fact, I'm concerned that as we hyper-focus on pushing students into STEM fields, we forget about teaching and practicing science communication. Because when you learn to communicate a science topic, you're approaching, breaking down, and explaining a complicated idea. And these skills aren't exclusive to science, but what they do is allow people to solve and define problems using varying perspectives and a shared language. And now, more than ever, we need young people with a rich array of perspectives and the ability to communicate those ideas clearly. And this, I believe, will empower us to solve the world's most challenging problems. Thank you.